we have Tom and Max here. They have a talk here with a very complicated title that I don't quite understand yet. It's called Interactively Discovering Implicational Knowledge in Wikidata. And they told me the point of this talk is that I will later understand what it means. And I hope I will. So good luck. Thank you very much. And have some applause, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, do you hear me? Does it work? Hello. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. And yeah, welcome to our talk about d interactively discovering applicational knowledge in Wikidata. Um, it is more or less a fun project we started um, for finding rules that are implicit in Wikidata, entailed just by the data it has yeah, um, people in inserted into the Wikidata database so far. Um, and we will start with the explicit knowledge, so the explicit data in Wikidata with Max. So, right. Uh, what, what is Wikidata? Maybe you have heard about Wikidata, then that's all fine. Maybe you haven't, then surely you've heard of Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is run by the Wikimedia Foundation, and the Wikimedia Foundation has several other projects, and one of those is Wikidata. And Wikidata is basically a large graph that encodes machine-readable knowledge in the form of statements, um, and the statement basically consists of some entity that is connected uh, or some, some entities that are connected by, a state, uh, by, a, by some property, and these properties can then even have annotations on them. So, for example, we have Donna Strickland here, and we encode that she has received a, a Nobel Prize in Physics last year by this property awarded, and this has then a qualifier, time 2018, and also for chirp pulse amplification, and uh, all in all, we have some 890 million statements on Wikidata that connect 71 million items using 7,000 properties. So, uh, but there's also a bit more. So, um, we also know that Donna Strickland has field of work optics and also field of work lasers. So, we can use the same property to connect some entity with different other entities. And we don't even have to, to have knowledge that connects to entities. We can have her date of birth, which is 1959. Uh, uh, 1990, no, 1959, yes. Um, and this is then just a plain date and not an entity. And now coming to from the explicit knowledge, then well, we, we have some more. We have Donna Strickland has received a Nobel Prize in Physics, and also Marie Curie has received a Nobel Prize in Physics. And we also know that Marie Curie has a, a Nobel Prize ID um, that starts with Phys and then 1903, and some, some random numbers that basically are this ID. And then Marie Curie also has received a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911, so she has another Nobel ID that starts, uh, starts with Chem and has 1911 there. And then there's also Frances Arnold, who received a Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year. So she has a Nobel ID that starts with CHEM and has 2018 there. And now one, one could assume that, well, everybody who has awarded a Nobel Prize ID should also have uh, a Nobel, uh, so everybody who was awarded a Nobel Prize should also have a Nobel Prize ID. Uh, and we, we could write that as some implication here. Uh, so awarded Nobel Prize implies Nobel ID. And well, if you, if you look sharply at this picture, then there's this arrow here conspicuously missing that Donna Strickland uh, doesn't have a Nobel Prize ID. And indeed, there's 25 people currently on Wikidata that are missing Nobel Prize IDs, and Donna Strickland is one of them. So and we call these, these people that don't satisfy this implication, we call those counterexamples. And well, if you look at, at Wikidata on, on the scale of really these 890 million statements, then you, you won't find any counterexamples because it's just too big. So we, we need some way to automatically do that. And the, the idea is that, well, if we had this knowledge that, well, some implications are not satisfied, then this encodes maybe missing information or wrong information. Uh, and we want to represent that in, in a way that is easy to understand uh, and also succinct. So it doesn't take long to, to write it down. Should have a short representation 
Uh, so that rules out any, anything including, uh, including complex syntax or logical quantifiers, so no Sparkle queries as, as a description of that implicit knowledge. Uh, no description logics, if you've heard of that. And we also want something that we can actually compute on actual hardware in a reasonable time frame. And, well, so our approach is we use formal concept analysis, which is a technique that has been developed over the past several years um, to extract what is called propositional implications, so just logical formulas of propositional logic um, that are an implication in the form of this awarded Nobel Prize ID implies Nobel ID. And, well, so what exactly is formal concept analysis? Off to Tom. Thank you. So, um, what is formal concept analysis? It was developed in the 1980s by a guy called Rudolf Wille and uh, Bernhard Ganter. And they were restructuring lattice theory. Lattice theory is an ambiguous name. In maths, it's two meanings. One meaning is you have a grid and have a lattice there. The other thing is they speak about orders, order relations. So I like steaks, I like uh, pudding, and I like steaks more than pudding, and I like rice more than steaks. That's an order, right? And lattices are particular orders which um, can be used um, to represent propositional logic, so easy rules, like when it rains, the street gets wet, right? So, and the data representation those, those guys used back then, they called it a formal context, which is basically just a set of objects, they call them objects, it's just a name, a set of attributes, and some incidents, which basically means which object does have which attributes. So, for example, my laptop has the color black, so this object has some property, right? So there's a small example on the right for such a formal context. So the objects there are some animals. A platypus, that's the fun animal from Australia. The uh, mammal, which is also laying eggs and which is also venomous. Black widow, the spider, the duck and the cat. So when we see, okay, platypus has all the properties. It has uh, being venomous, laying eggs and being a mammal. We have the duck, which is not a mammal, but it lays eggs, and so on and so on. And it's very easy to grasp some implication of knowledge here. An easy rule you can find is, whenever you endeavor a mammal that is venomous, it has to lay eggs. So this is a rule that falls out of this binary data table. Our main problem then, or at this point, is we do not have such a data table for Wikidata, right? We have the implicit graph, which is way more expressive than binary data. And we cannot even store Wikidata as a binary table. Even if you try to, we have no chance to compute such rules from that. And for this, the people from formal content analysis um, uh, yeah, proposed uh, an algorithm to extract implicit knowledge from an expert. So our expert here could be Wikidata. It's an expert. You can ask Wikidata questions, right? using this Sparkle interface. You can ask, you can ask, is there an example for that? Is there an account example for something else? So the algorithm is quite easy. The algorithm is, yeah, the algorithm and some expert, in our case, Wikidata. And the algorithm keeps notes for counter examples and keeps notes for valid implications. So in the beginning, we do not have any valid implications. So this list on the right is empty. And in the beginning, we do not have any counter examples. So the list on the left, the formal context to build up, is also empty. And all the algorithm does now is, it asks, is this implication, x follows y, uh, y follows x, or x implies y, is it true? So is it true, for example, that uh, an animal that is a mammal and it is venomous lays x? So now the expert, which in our case is Wikidata, can answer it. We can query that. We showed in our paper, we can query that. So we query it, and if, we, if the uh, Wikidata expert does not find any counter examples, it will say, okay, that's maybe a true, true thing. It's yes. Or if it's not a true uh, implication in Wikidata, it can say, no, 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 it's not true. And here's a counter example. So this is something you, you contradict by example. You say, this rule cannot be true. For example, um, when the street is wet, does not mean it has rained, right? It could be in the uh, cleaning service uh, car or something else. So and our idea what now was to use Wikidata as an expert, but also include a human into this loop. So we do not just want to ask Wikidata, we also want to ask a human expert as well. So we first ask in our tool um, the Wikidata expert for some rule. 
after that, we also inquire the human expert, and he can also say, yeah, yeah, that's true, I know that. Or no, no, Wikidata is not aware of this counterexample. I know one. Or in the other case, oh, Wikidata says this is true. I'm aware of a counterexample. Yeah, and so on and so on. And you can represent this more or less as, this is just some mathematical picture, it's not very important, but <laughs> you can see on the left, like, there's an exploration going on just Wikidata with the algorithm on the right. An exploration, a human expert versus Wikidata, which can answer all the queries. And we combine those two into one small tool under development. So back to Max. OK. Uh, so for, for that to work, we basically need to have a way of viewing Wikidata, or at least parts of Wikidata, as a formal context. And this formal context, well, this, this was a binary table. So, well, what do we do? We just take all the items in Wikidata as objects and all the properties as attributes of our context and, and then have an incidence relation that says, well, this entity has this property, so it, it is incident there. And then we end up with a context that has 71 million rows and 7,000 columns. So, uh, well, that might actually be a slight problem there because we, we want to have something that we can run on actual hardware and not on a supercomputer. So uh, let's, let's maybe not do that and focus on a smaller set of properties that are actually related to one another through some kind of common domain. Yeah? So it doesn't make any sense to, to have a property that relates to spacecraft and then a property that relates to books. That's, that's probably not a good idea to, to try to find impli uh, implicit knowledge between those two. But well, two different properties about spacecraft, that, that sounds good, right? So, um, and then the interesting question is just how do we define the incidence for, for our set of properties? And, well, that actually depends very much on which properties we choose, because it does for, for some properties it makes sense to, to account for the direction of the statement. So there's a property called parent. Um, or actually, no, it's, it's child, and then there's father and mother. So, um, and, and you don't want to turn those around, yes? You, you want to have um, A is a child of B. That, that should be something different than, than B is a child of A. Um, then there's the qualifiers that might be important for some properties. Um, so receiving an award for something uh, might be something different than, than receiving an award for something else. But uh, well, receiving an award in, in 2018 and receiving one in 2017, that's probably more or less the same thing. So um, we, we don't necessarily need to, to differentiate that. And there's also a thing called subclasses, and they form a hierarchy on Wikidata. And you might also want to take that into account, because while winning something that is, that is a Nobel Prize, that means also winning an, an award itself. And winning the Nobel Peace Prize means winning an, a Peace Prize. So that, that there's also implications going on there that you want to respect. So, um, and to, to see how we actually do that, let's look at an example. So we have here, well, uh, this is Donna Strickland, and and um, ah, for, forgot his first name. Uh, Ashken. This is one of the the people that won the Nobel Prize in Physics with her last year, and also Gérard Moreau. This is the the third one, and uh, they they all got the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, Physics last year. So. Um, we have all these statements here. And these two have a, a qualifier that says with uh, and Jérôme Rau here. Um, and I don't think the qualifier is on this statement here, actually. But it doesn't actually matter. So um, what, what we've done here is, well, put all the entities in this small graph as rows in the table. So we have Strickland and Muru and Ashken, and also Arnold and Curie that are not in the picture. But, well. You, you can maybe remember that. And then here we have awarded, and we scale that by the instance of the different Nobel Prizes that people have won. Right? So there's the Physics Nobel in the first column, the, the Chemistry Nobel Prize in the second column, and just general Nobel Prizes in the third column. Uh, there's awarded, and that is scaled by this with qualifier. So awarded with uh, Gérard Moreau, and then there's field of work, and we have lasers here and radioactivity. Um, so we scale by the actual field of work that people have. And well, then if we look what, what kind of incidents we get for Donna Strickland, well, she has a Nobel Prize in physics, uh, and that is also a Nobel Prize. And she has that together with Gérard Moreau. And 
while she has field of work lasers, but not radioactivity. Then Moreau itself, uh, he has a Nobel Prize in physics, and that is a Nobel Prize, but none of the others. Um, Ashkin gets a Nobel Prize in physics, and that is still a Nobel Prize, and he gets that with Gérard Moreau, and also he works in lasers, um, but not in radioactivity. So Francis Arnold has a Nobel Prize in chemistry, and that is a Nobel Prize. And uh, Marie Curie, um, she has a Nobel Prize in physics and one in chemistry, and they are both a Nobel Prize. And she also works in radioactivity, but lasers didn't exist back then, so she doesn't get field of work lasers. And then, basically, this table here is a representation of our formal context. So, and then we've actually gone ahead and started building a tool where you can interactively do all these thing, uh, things and it will take care of building the context for you. You just put in the properties and, well, Tom will show you how that works. So here you see some first screenshots of this tool. So uh, please do not comment on the graphic design. We have no idea about that. We have to ask someone about that. We are just into logics, more or less. On the left, you say the initial state of the game. On the left, you have like five boxes. They're called countries and borders, credit cards, use of energy, uh, what, memory and uh, com computation, Compu computation I think, yeah. uh, and space launches, which are just presets we defined for this can you can explore. For example, in the case of the credit card, you can explore the properties from Wikidata, which are called card network, operator, and fee. So you can just choose one of them, or on the right, custom properties, you can just input the properties you're interested in in Wikidata, whatever one of the seven thousands you like, <laughs> or some number of them. On the right, I chose then the credit card thingy, and I now want to show you what happens if you now explore these properties, right? So the, fir the first step in the game is that the game will ask, I mean the game, the exploration process will ask, is it true that every entity in Wikidata will have these three properties? So are they common among all entities in your data? Which is most probably not true, right? I mean, not everything in uh, Wikidata has a fee, at least I hope. So what I will do now, I would um, click the reject this implication button, so the implication, nothing implies everything is not true. And the second step now, the algorithm tries to find the minimal number of questions to obtain the domain knowledge, so the, uh, to obtain all valid rules in this domain. So next question is, is it true that everything in Wikidata that has a card network property also has a fee and an operator property? And down here you can see Wikidata says, okay, there are 26 items which are counter examples. So there are 26 items in Wikidata which have the card network property, but do not have the other two ones. So 26 is not a big number. This could mean, okay, there's an error. So 26 statements are missing. Or maybe that, that's by, by really, that's the true case. That's also okay. But you can now choose what you think is right. You can say, oh, I would say it, this should be true. Or you can say, no, I think that's okay. One of these counter examples seems valid. Let's reject it. I, in this case, rejected it. The next question it asks, uh, is it true that everything that has an operator has also a fee and a card network? Yeah, this is possibly not true. There's also more than 1,000 counterexamples, one being, I think, a telecommunication operator in Hungary or something. Um, so we can reject this as well. Next question, everything that has an operator and a card network, so card network means like Visa, MasterCard, whatever, all this stuff, is it true that they have to have a fee? Hmm. Wikidata says no. It has 23 items that contradict it, but one of the items, for example, is the American Express Gold Card. I suppose the American Express Gold Card has some fee, so this indicates, oh, there is missing data in Wikidata. There is something that Wikidata does not know, but should know to reason correctly in Wikidata with your Sparkle queries. So we can now say, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's not a reject, that's an accept, because we think it should be true, but Wikidata thinks otherwise. And you go on, and you go on. This is then the last question. Uh, is it true that everything that has a fee in the card network should have an operator? And you see, oh, no counterexamples. This means, Wikidata says this is true. Wikidata says there is no counterexamples. If you ask Wikidata, it says this is a valid application in the data set so far, which could also be 
uh, indicating that something is missing. I'm, I'm not aware if this is possible or not, but okay, for me it sounds reasonable. Everything that has a fee and a card network should also have an operator, which means a bank or something like that. So I accept this implication. And then, yeah, you have won the implication game, uh, the exploration game, which <laughs> essentially means you've won some knowledge. Yeah, thank you. And the knowledge is you know which implications in Wikidata are true or should be true from your point of view. And yeah, this is more or less the state of the game so far as we programmed it in October. And the next state will be uh, to show you some how much does your opinion of the world differ from the opinion that is now reflected in the data. So is what you think about the data true, close to true to what is true in Wikidata, or maybe Wikidata has wrong information. You can find it with that. But Max will tell, uh, tell me more about that. OK. So uh, let me just quickly well, come, come back to what we have actually done. So we offer a, a procedure that allows you to explore properties in Wikidata and the implicational knowledge that holds between these properties. Um, and well, the, the key idea is here that when, when you look at these implications that you get, well, there might be some that you don't actually want because they, they shouldn't be true. Um, and there might also be ones that you don't get, but you expect to get because they should hold. Um, and, and these unwanted and or missing implications, they point to missing statements and items in Wikidata. So they show you where the opportunities to improve the knowledge in Wikidata are. And well, sometimes you also get to learn something about the world. And in most cases, it's that the world is more complicated than you thought it was. Uh, and, and that's just how life is. But in general, well, implications can guide you in your way uh, of improving Wikidata and the state of knowledge therein. So what's, what's next? Well, um, so what we currently don't offer in the exploration game and what, what we definitely will focus next on is having uh, configurable counterexamples and also filterable counterexamples. Right now, you just get a list of, of a random number of counterexamples. And well, you, you might want to search through this list for, for something you recognize. And you might also want to explicitly say, well, this one should be a counterexample. And that's definitely coming next. Um, then, well, domain-specific scaling of properties, there's still much work to be done. Uh, currently, we, we only have some very basic support for that. So you can have properties, but um, you, you can't do the fancy things where you say, well, everything that is an award should be uh, considered as one instance of this property. Um, that's also coming. And then uh, what Tom mentioned already, well, compare your knowledge that you have explored through this process uh, against the knowledge that is currently on Wikidata um, as a form of seeing, well, where do you stand? What is missing in Wikidata? How can you improve Wikidata? And well, if you have any more suggestions for features, then just tell us. Um, there's a GitHub link uh, on the implication game page. And here's the link to the tool again. So um, yeah, just, just let us know. Uh, open an issue and have fun. And if you have any questions, then I guess now would be the time to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom <laughs> and Max. Yes. So we will switch microphones now, <laughs> because then I can hand this microphone to you if any of you have a question for our two speakers. Are there any questions or suggestions? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. I wanted to ask, what's the first question, what's the most interesting implication that you've found? <laughs> yeah, that, that would have made for a good backup slide. Um, the, the most impl interesting implication so far um, most basic thing you would expect, everything that is launched in space by humans, no, no, everything that landed from space, but, but it has a landing date, also has a start date. So <laughs> nothing landed on Earth which was not started here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, right now the game only uh, helps you uh, find out implications. Are you also planning to have where I can also add data? Like, for example, let's say I have 25 Nobel laureates who don't have a Nobel laureate ID. Is there is there plans where you can give me a simple interface for me to Google and add that ID? Because 
it would make the process of adding new entities to Wikidata itself more simple? Yes, um, and that's that's partly hidden behind this configurable and fitterable counterexamples thing. Um, we, we will probably not have an, an explicit interface for adding stuff, but most likely interface with some, some other tool built around Wikidata. Uh, so probably something that will give you quick statements or something like that. But yes, so adding, adding data is definitely on the roadmap. Any more questions? Yes. Wouldn't it be nice to do this in other languages too? Like uh, to, yeah. Uh, actually, it's a language independent. So we use Wikidata, and then as far as we know, Wikidata has no language itself. You know, it has just items and properties, so queues and p's. And whatever language you use, it should be translated in the language of the properties if there is a label for that property or for that item that you have. So if Wikidata is aware of your language, we are. Oh, yes. More. And, and of course, the tool still needs to be translated, but. That is it tool itself, yeah. it should be. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the talk. Thanks. I have a question. Right now, you only can find missing data with this, right? Or surplus data. Would you think we'd be able to find wrong information with a similar approach? Uh, well, it actually, we do. I mean, if Wikidata has a counter example to something, something we would expect to be true, this, this could point to wrong data, right? If the counter example is a wrong counter example. If there is a missing property or a missing property to an item. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I get to ask a second question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it, it, the the horizontal axis in the incidents matrix. Uh, uh, you, you said it has seven thousand. Uh, uh, it spans seven thousand columns, right? Yes. Or because wood? there there are seven thousand properties in Wikidata. Um, but it's actually way more columns, right? Because you multiply the properties, properties times the arguments, right? Yes. So if, you, if you do any scaling, then of course that will give you multiple entries per. So that's per what you mean with yes. uh, scaling, basically. Yes. Ah, okay. But, As you can but see here, already seven thousand is way too big to to actually compute that. <laughs> how, how many would it be if you uh, multiply all the arguments? I I have no idea. Um, Probably a few million. Have you thought about a recursive method as uh, counterexamples may be wrong by other counterexamples? Like an argumentative graph or something like this? Um. Actually, I don't get it. How yeah. can be a counterexample be wrong through another counterexample? Uh, maybe some example says uh, that uh, cats can have golden hair, and then you s another, another example might say that this is not a cat. Or like. Oh, so the, uh, the, the property to be a cat or something catish is missing, then, okay. No, we have not um, considered so far deeper reasoning. So far, this. Um, Horn propositional logic, you know, it, it has no contradictions because all you can do is you can contradict by counterexample, but there, there can never be a rule that is not true so far. Just in your, my opinion, maybe, but not in the logic. <laughs> so, but we have to think about it that we have bigger reasoning, right? So, Sorry, quick question. So, because you're not considering all the 7,000 odd properties for each of the entities, right? What's your current process of filtering? What are the relevant properties? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, well, we, we basically handpick those. Um, so you, you have this input field here where you can go ahead and, and select your properties. Um, we, we also have some predefined sets. Okay. And, and there's also some, some classes for groups of properties that are related that you could use if you want bigger sets. For example, space or family yeah. or what was the other? Uh, awards, is, awards is one, yeah. It depends on the size of the class. For example, for space, it's not that much. It's like 10 or 15 properties. It will take you some hours, but you can do. Uh, because, yeah, 15 or something like that. Uh, I think for, for family, it's way too much. It's like 40 or 50 properties. So a lot of questions. I don't see any more hands. Maybe <laughs> someone who has not asked a question yet has another one. We could take that. 
otherwise we would be perfectly on time and maybe you can tell us where you will be for deeper discussions where, where people can find you probably at the couches <laughs> the couches behind our yes. stage yeah perfect or, or just running around somewhere um so there's there's also our deck numbers on the slides here it's six two eight four for tom and and six two seven nine for me um so just call and well well then well where, where we're hanging around thank you again have a round of applause thank you oh thanks for having me.